Right, slight change of theme today. Uh, this is just a quick video to say um, I haven't really done much with the Land Rover recently. I've got to get a shed sorted out first. Um, I'm ordering the shed tomorrow. Once that's happened, then I can move all the junk out of my garage and then uh, carry on in a week or two, hopefully. Um, so, one of the things I've got to do now, because spring is on the way, is get my Harley back on the road. Now Now, usually my bike's out all year round, but I kind of got caught off guard just before Christmas. It was first MOT, and I had a bit of a problem with some of the indicators. Um, I've got some aftermarket indicators on the back, and all the wires perished underneath in the sort of wet. So I've got to replace the indicators, and the weather was getting colder, so I just got annoyed with it. So um, I've taken it off the road, and now I need to get the battery back on, get it started, back to his MOT ready for the bike show season. I think the battery may have actually gone on this at the moment. Um, I charged it up overnight, so I'll see if I get it started. Last time I was playing around with this battery, I had the alarm going off constantly. One of the things that catches you with these um, these bikes with the uh, the key fob is if you want to take the battery on or off you've got to do it with the ignition on if you try doing it with the ignition off then the alarm will go off so I don't know how this is going to work you may get an alarm so ignition on I think, because the alarm's going off now, I think the battery in this key fob is gone. That's really annoying. So, like every other job I've been trying recently, this has been a complete pain in the ass. So I came out here today, all I wanted to do is start my bike. Charge the battery up last night, put it on, nothing. Got my new Land Rover battery down there, tried that, nothing. Checking batteries and key fobs. Um, around about two and a half volts. I know the battery's supposed to be three volts, but I thought well, it can't be the key fob that's the problem. I mean, both of them, neither of them were working. So after pulling my hair out for half an hour, I finally put a new battery in the key fob, three volts. And the ignition's come on straight away. As to whether it start, let's see. So I'll probably get told off by my son for swearing a minute ago. Whilst stripping down the Land Rover, I managed to lose one of the bolts that goes on the battery, so I'll have to find that later. One of the things you need to do with this is uh, when you put the alarm the battery back on is make sure the ignition's on otherwise the alarm will go off as I found out one Sunday morning and of course you take the battery off then and it's got the back of battery and alarm so that thing carries on going off for ages <laughs>
So, note to self, next time bike won't start, check battery and key fob. It got me for a minute because um, usually when you turn the ignition on, you can hear the sort of uh, engine, uh, the sort of system priming, like so. But I wasn't getting that a minute ago. So I don't know whether it was a combination of the key fob battery too low, plus the battery had only just been put back on, so maybe it needs to charge up the alarm backup battery, or I don't know, who knows. So all i got to do now to get this through the MRT, um, I had some LED indicators on the back, and um, they're very, very thin cables, and stupidly I just had them going up the rear fender. Of course, with all the water kicking up against them, they just perished and eventually sort of snapped off. Um, tried soldering them, but it was too late. I mean, the, the, the rubber across the whole of the wire was just completely perished, and I kept like cutting it down and cutting it down and cutting it down. Couldn't get any more solder on there. So I've got to order some more LED indicators. Um, I've got some wiring now, so I'm going to run it. Rather than using the sort of LED wiring, which is very, very thin, I've got much uh, thicker wiring, which is going to be running from the back, straight down the side, and then under the seat. I'll get that sorted soon. Get my power commander put back in there as well. And then good to go. You know, as much as I like this Harley, the workmanship on it is it's not great. You know, it's a well, well I guess it's a three year old bike now. It's been ridden most winters, but there's just rust all over the place. And I look after it, you know, I um I got I put W D forty over it all year round, you know, it's uh, but it does get ridden quite a lot. Just frustrating when you see sort of rust appearing and you can't do much about it. So I think I'll use this opportunity over the next week or two before I put it in for some MRT to sort of tidy up a little bit. So um, my Land Rover project is a bit of a new thing. Um, don't really like working on cars that much. It's just Pink was selling one. He's been going on about Land Rovers every time I speak to him for about the last 70 years or something. And uh, so that's why I sort of went out and I thought it'd be a great project. And I'm, you know, I'm quite enjoying it. But what I'm really into are bikes. I've had bikes now for 30 years. This is my first style of bike like this. I've always had sports bikes in the past or Street Fighters. Haven't had much to it. Got aftermarket uh, air cleaner there. Um, I have the LED lights on the back. I've got a side mount plate which I've just put on as well. Power Commander. One of the annoyances, annoyances with the uh, European version of the Fat Bob is that you only get one headlight on. So I bought the conversion kit to get both of them working because it just looked ridiculous. Kept on getting people coming up to me telling one of my lights was out. Lance and Hines pipes, absolutely awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I had a little bit of an accident last year with ice on the end of my road. Didn't actually come off the bike, just uh, lent it over and spun around a few times. That was annoying because these are 600 pound exhaust. Luckily, it's not actually on the exhaust itself. This is um, um, like a heat heat shield that goes on. I'll get around to fixing that at some point. Uh, not really one of these people that cleans my bikes and polishes it. Um, I don't like chrome, purely because, well, I've got nothing against chrome, I just hate cleaning chrome. So I'm trying to sort of blacken out a lot of this stuff. Uh, I ride my bike all year round, and uh, I don't really have the time to sit there polishing it over and over again. It's, I haven't said that, it's never this huge, it's never this dirty. The reason it's this dirty at the moment is because of the Land Rover and all the grinding I've been doing, it's just got dust all over it. Right, I don't think I'm gonna get another Land Rover video out for, um, well, a couple of weeks at least. So what I may do is another bike video like this. I'll do it on a different playlist because I appreciate not everyone's into bikes. Um, I've got a couple of bits to order on it and I'll show you what it's like when it's finished and all cleaned. In the meantime, I'm going to water my shed, get that sorted out, and then get crack on with the Land Rover. Right, off for a brew.